So there's a lot of confusion today about what it means to be a man. And uh, so that's why we thought many months ago that it'd be a great thing. Let's talk about what it is to be a man, to be a woman. You know, nowadays, uh, unlike any time in my lifetime, we're more confused about what it is to be a man or to be a woman. Uh, now we have terms that some, not too many years ago, we didn't even know about. We talk now about sexual or gender, uh, you know, identity. We talk about sexual orientation. We talk about being transgender, cross-gender, uh, cisgender. Have you heard that one? C-I-S, gender, is, uh, means that you identify with the sex that you were given when you were born. You got male body parts, uh, you're male. Um, the challenge comes, uh, just because you're male doesn't mean you're a man. So I want to talk about gender identity, uh, but, but we don't have time to go into the very complex issues that we have addressed at times and need to do so more often, I suppose, but we're going to talk about what it is to be a man. There's great confusion in our day, and uh, many of us uh, realize that the great challenge, the crisis in our nation is that we have a lack of male leadership uh, at the highest level all the way down. But as Dr. Evans noted last night, it all starts in the home. So I'm so grateful to have men across uh, generations here. And I want to offer this. Some of you have come across the Babylon Bee. Has anybody read this? It's a farcical news um, source, if you call it new, fake news, it is that. Um, and like the onion, but it's, it's a humorous uh, Christian perspective, right? It's satire on cultural topics, even hot topics. Um, this picture here I want you to see goes with the headline, uh, man identifying as six-year-old crushes game-winning homer in t-ball championship. <laughs> nah. Local 36-year-old man, Nate, here's the article, Ripley, who identifies as a six-year-old, absolutely crushed a game-winning homer at a local t-ball game and won the championship for his team on Monday evening, reports confirmed. Ripley reportedly walked up to the plate in the bottom of the six, pointed his bat toward the left field wall looming 130 feet away. <laughs> and let her rip, sending the ball rocketing over the fence into the parking lot as fans cheered and his coach yelled out, boy, Nate, good job, bud. His team, the Lil Pirates, attempted to hoist him up on their shoulders in celebration of their great victory over the favored tiny tigers, but were unable to pick up the large 230-pound man. Ripley's feet comes after, uh, at the end of a momentous t-ball season in which he, the, the self-identified six-year-old absolutely shattered every record set prior to that point with a one point, okay, thousand, you know, batting average of 1,000, uh, 52 home runs, an incredible showing at first base, second base, shortstop, third base, and pitcher. The man is being called an inspiration to other six-year-olds everywhere. I'm just proud to be here with my team. It's all for the love of the game. And emotional Ripley told reporters while enjoying an orange slice and juice box after <laughs> the championship. We have a man identifying, self-identifying as a boy. Now this becomes an apt analogy because what we have today are men. How about this? Boys walking around in men's bodies. The problem in our nation today so much goes back to the fact that we don't have men who understand what it is to be men and men who are discipling other men and pouring their lives into other men to raise up boys to men. And so today what I want to talk about is God's design. I want to talk about a divine design that God has given us and it's God's plan for every man. I want to launch into this uh, sermon with a single verse. Uh, and, it, and it, it's a verse that Paul offers to the church in Corinth after uh, he, he has walked through so much in, the, in 1 Corinthians. He's, he's saying to this early church, he says, listen, we got problems in the church. There's sexual immorality. There's disunity in the body. And he calls it out. And he says, in the end, here's how the church is going to flourish in a pagan and even hostile environment. 
there in Corinth. And what he does at the end is noteworthy. He addresses men specifically. And he says, this is not going to happen apart from men taking on their role. And so in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, you can see it there on the screen. It says this. In fact, let's read it together. Can you read that? Here we go. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Wow. I love that. You guys sound great. Strong today. As you follow Jesus every day, I'm going to challenge you today to, to be watchful to stand firm in the faith, to act like men. What does that look like? And then to be strong. All right. So as we do this, I'm going to use this, really each one of those are in the imperative command. So we're going to look at each one of these imperative commands, but we're also going to use uh, Moses as a model, as a, uh, but use this verse as a framework as we think about what it means to be a man. I heard someone say this week that the great challenge that we have in our day is the, we've got men in positions of leadership who are just taking on their new toys. They're just playing like boys. But the stakes are so much higher. And I don't need to tell you that we have a leadership crisis in our nation and in our world. And the problem is that many men, even Christian men, are not stepping up into those places of service. They've not realized that they're simply uh, not called to be here as lethargic pew sitters or consumer Christians but instead that we're to take the lead as men. It's God's design for us to lead out in our communities and in the church. And I'm praying, men, I'm praying that this message will so touch the hearts of hundreds of men in our church that we'll never be the same, that we'll all step into our place to be courageous leaders. We're at a place in our church, in the history of our church, where we need men to rise up and to serve like Jesus, across the life of our church, from the youngest ones among us to the eldest. We need men who are going to be door holders and welcome and greeting people. And it is men, many of you, who are serving every single week and leading out in mission efforts across our our city. And I praise God for you. But God has called you to be participants in the kingdom of God and the advancement of the gospel. And that is the greatest life a man can live. I find many men who are bored, not because they don't have a lot to do or lots, lots of money and lots of options, but because they're doing nothing significant for the Lord. And today, I want to encourage you to, to follow the Lord and to find your place and seek him. Here's what I've done. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 breaks down like this in our context. God's divine design, the focus of our message today for men, is to live with a watchful eye, a gospel-centered identity unshakable courage, and a constant pursuit of Jesus. Thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. If you would like more information about our church or following Jesus, please go to our website, pcbc.org, or contact our church offices. We hope to see you next week at church.